you, you, wherever you are. We need you to stay. We need you here. This world is better because of you. Please, please, please stay. Please talk to someone. Please get help. And, and, and you can be better. Now we're going to talk with Spencer about one of his challenging events. And I thank you for being so vulnerable and honest on this. As I read this, I actually, uh, I wept. I actually wept. And then I read another a couple of weeks ago of something that you and Abby did that I wept again. And I'm going to talk to Abby about that you one. should, yeah. Not yeah, you. Yeah, that's a that's good one That's Abby's story. It is her story. You know which one I'm talking I do, about? I do indeed, yeah. All right, Spencer, you grew up in a rural community very similar to community I grew up in yeah you considered yourself a nerd yeah I also self considered myself a nerd I spent more time in the garbage can than I did at my locker yeah, yeah that's that was me yeah. at the age of 14 14 or yeah. 13 yeah your yeah, parents right, went right through around. a divorce oh so my parents went through a divorce at age 10 okay yeah age 10 so okay. a little younger and uh, socially really a hard thing particularly in our cultural and small community and you reached a point where, although you never tried to act out, but at one point you considered taking your life. Correct. Yeah. Can you talk to us a little bit, uh, uh, honestly, vulnerably, but also boldly about sure. that? Sure. Yeah, yeah. And, and and it took me a long time uh, to to find the the, the language and and the, the the courage to talk about this. And once I did, it was it was very liberating. And, but but I've I've shared this story before. Um, you know, my parents got divorced when when I was young. Went through a very difficult time being the nerd in in school. You know, time in the garbage can. Those types of Picture things. Picture you now, man. That's, who could ever yeah. believe that? <laughs> Any of you kids watching? Hang on. Look at this. <laughs> <laughs> but set your bar higher, kids. That's, no. That's it. No. no, what they but, say is uh, Bill Gates used to always say, uh, "Be really nice to the nerds, guys, because one day you're going to work for them." That, hey, that's, that's hey, right. hey. <laughs> Here we are. That's it. And and so I I, I really started to think that um, that the world would be a better place if, yeah. if I wasn't in it. And that was a it was a dark time in in, in my life, um, and I, I wasn't sure how to deal with that. Again, it wasn't something we talked about yeah. ever. Uh, fortunately, I was surrounded by really um, great people who took an interest in me, um, uh, adults in, including family members, but also, and this is important. I, I've always said that um, especially especially in those early teenage years, having a, a trusted third, um, someone yeah. who is not your parent, uh, but takes an interest in you, who can be a mentor, uh, can be helpful. And I had a couple of those people in my life and and, and then some good friends that, that really changed. I started to see my, my own value, yeah. uh, my, my own self-worth, and, uh, and I realized that maybe the world would be a better place with, with me in it. And, and so th I, I share that, and, and I, I now talk often to young people in youth groups mm -hmm. because we do know that suicide is so prevalent. Um, we've learned over time and research that actually talking about it and having that conversation yeah. um, is, is the best way to, uh, to save lives. Um, we, we often think, well, I, I don't want to plant any you yeah. know, seeds or thoughts, but that you can't. The, the, you know, those thoughts are there. And, and asking, um, giving people the ability, um, uh, the, the permission to, to speak and to share what they're thinking is, is what they need and, and, and the best thing we can do to, uh, to save lives. That was absolutely beautiful. Vulnerable, honest, and I so appreciate it. You answered all three questions I was going to ask, but I'm going to ask them anyways, just because <laughs> I can. Just to re-emphasize re and to give three bullet points up on the screen here for everyone. First of all, what was the thing that switched in your mind to say, no, it is a better place with me? Number two is, is who, if anyone, intervened? And number yeah. three, the advice that you would give. We have a lot of uh, mothers and also fathers, a lot of strong, interested parents. What yeah. advice would you just straight up give them on this sensitive topic? Sure. So so the, the thing that switched in, in, in me was a, a feeling of connection. Right, a feeling of be belonging. It turns out we're, you know, we're wired for connection. I heard somebody say, you know, we have a lot of addiction, right? Um, deaths of despair that come in the form of suicide, um, but uh, but also in the form of addiction yeah. uh, to uh, medications, um, uh, alcohol, those types of things. And, and so what what I heard, and, and this was very powerful for me, um, the 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 opposite of addiction is not sobriety. The opposite of addiction is connection. Yeah. So that's what we need. Belonging and connection are 
are the key to solving these these types of issues. So so I felt that connection and belonging. Um, second, I, I, again, I had people that I connected with. Um, my, my parents, I had a stepmom that came into my life who was very patient with me, very loving, uh, helped me in so many ways, which is not the <laughs> usual story, right? In, in all the fairy tales, the yeah. stepmom's the bad person. Um, in my life, the stepmom was, was a savior of sorts to, to help me. Um, and, and then I had, I had some, some individuals outside of my family. I had, uh, I had an aunt and, and an uncle who were, I was really close to. Um, I had a, a scout leader that took an interest in me uh, cared about me. We shared a love of the same music, and uh, and he was someone who I felt connected to, mm-hmm. and I felt a belonging there. I'm all forever grateful for him. And and, and then th- the last thing is the the advice. Um, it's it's so hard to talk about these things, but um, I try to ask uh, my kids on occasion whenever I feel like they're struggling a little bit. And the truth is, even if you don't, um, sometimes you know it's the kids who are have straight A's and are perfect in school and everything's going well but to ask the question have you thought about suicide before and they may they, they may say yes um they may say no and but they have but but just knowing that they have yeah. someone there that you're interested in that it's okay to have yeah. that conversation it's not off limits now i know as a parent you're thinking what if they do say yes i don't know what to do and you're right there's some great training on out there it's called qpr training mm-hmm. um uh, QPR, it's like CPR. We, we all learned CPR as, as kids, right? And in Scouts, yeah. we learned what to do if someone was was it was unconscious, how to how to do CPR. QPR is the same thing, but it's it stands for question, persuade, and refer. Mm-hmm. So you ask the question: Have you thought about it? You can ask friends, kids, you know, your own kids, whoever, um, and then you persuade them. Hey. I, look, I'm so sorry you're feeling this way. I, I, I want to be able to help you. Can, let's let's get help together. You know, yeah. just persuade, and then you refer them to someone. And we have some great tools available in our state right now. Um, we have the uh, we, the Safe Utah app on on. You can look, download it on your phone or your device. This app is incredible because it's it's. It, 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 it doesn't take any effort. You don't have to drive somewhere. Um, you don't have to call someone. You push a button on your phone and you can do it anonymously. That's mm-hmm. the best part. If you're worried, you can do it anonymously or you can do it you know, with, without anonymity. You can tell them who you are and you can be in contact with a, a professional Beautiful. immediately. Does that I, work also outside of Utah? It, Much of our audience is, is all is over outside. the world. So we are trying to share this mm. um, outside of the state of Utah. We have other states well, that I are think interested. We just did it. I, we, we just <laughs> did. And, and I, we're encouraging, if you're interested in your communities, let us know. You, anybody can download it. Anyone Beautiful. can download it. It. Um, it, it's it's only for Utah residents, but you can look at it. You can see how it works. Um, but there are other there are suicide hotlines that you, that you can call. Every country has a suicide hotline. Every state has mm. suicide hotlines. Those types of things. But at the push of a button, you can have these conversations. Yeah. And so that's the refer part. So now we refer them to a professional yeah. who can help them and, and and get them what they need. Counselors at school. There there are helpers everywhere, and we just we need just to be looking for the them. Door. Yep, that's okay, it. Okay, we're gonna make sure that we put that uh, that resource and 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 that uh, sequence uh, up on the screen if we can do that as part of uh, part of uh, our interview here uh, just I mean I, I I hope you felt it I hope you saw it when we give voice what uh, Spencer just did is he went towards some of the hard topics and uh, rather than hide it he didn't jump underneath the table <laughs> yeah. he looked it dead straight in the eyeballs that's what you just did and that gives it voice, courage, brings it out into the light. And then the big, hairy, scary monster isn't so big and scary anymore. And we can face it head on. That, that's so true. It's, it's the unknown that scares us. In, in fact, I, I, I've always believed that our deepest, darkest, darkest secrets are the world's greatest truths. Yeah. Um, and, and we found that with, you know, with when it comes to suicide ideation and thought, um, it, most people have gone through those phases yeah. and we think we're broken we think that we're alone and the truth is we're not this ha- this is very common there's nothing wrong with you it's amazing when when we break an arm rich you, you mentioned you, you know that, that sometimes we're getting older now our feet yeah. hurt our legs <laughs> hurt right things hurt when we break an arm yeah. It, it, when you're a kid, what do we do? We celebrate it. Yeah. You go to school with your cast and everybody signs your mm-hmm. cast and you're the cool kid because you broke your arm. Well, when something breaks here, 
we're embarrassed by and we hide from it. Yeah. It, 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 that's crazy. We have to change the culture in this world and, and, and be vulnerable and, and, and run towards those difficult, scary things. That's right. We find out we're not alone. They're not difficult. They're not scary. We, we're surrounded by, by help, and, and, and we can get better. We can absolutely get better. We need you, you, wherever you are. We need you to stay. We need you here. This world is better because of you. Please, please, please stay. Please talk to someone. Please get help, and and, and you can be better. It, it's it's incredible. It's the fierce with reality, facing our fears, fierce with reality, and you articulate it so incredibly well. I don't even need to put a wrap on that, Spencer. Um, I think it's also fueling addictions. A Absolutely. lot of the addictions yeah. is is actually loss of connection, and the way that we heal this is connection and just going and looking the bogeyman. And I I, I do want to just back up a little bit on that mental health uh, topic because it's not it, the stigma is not there like it was, and the the instruments not as crude. There's a lot of beautiful resources now that we can treat these things so much more effectively, and it's not something to be ashamed of. It it, it is getting better, and, and I'm grateful it's getting better. And and you're right. We and, and that's what I would. The other thing I would say is just look around. Who around you needs you today? Sometimes you'll be the one that needs someone, but yeah. most days if we're giving back, it's also good for our mental health when we're yeah. when we're serving others and, and giving back. So um, just just look for that. That connection is so, so important. And, and you're right about the addiction piece. It, it, uh, that lack of connection, we try to numb ourselves from whatever it is we're scared of or whatever it is we're missing out of and uh, the, the numbing doesn't last it's yeah. not it's not real happiness uh, we, yeah. we find that in in dealing head-on with with those those trials and those fears that was absolutely beautiful I'm so grateful to Spencer for just hitting it dead on the nose Spencer any final words you'd like to say before we put a wrap on this one. Well, Rich, thank you for allowing me to have this conversation and be part of this. It's what I admire so much about you um, everywhere you go. Our, our motto um, with our team in, in government is, uh, is to be recklessly good. Um, I, I'm always encouraging our people to be recklessly good. And there, there's so much good in the world. It's easy to get caught up in the negativity. Yeah. It's easy to get dra dragged down by what we're seeing on social media, what we're seeing in the news today. Um, turn all of that off. Go look around you. There's, there's beauty in the world. Uh, find your friends. Make new friends. Meet your neighbors. Go out. Uh, build your community. And, and, and life's, life's good. Life is really good. Life is amazing good when you, uh, not that I would suggest it because you're all on social media, but turn your social media off and down a little bit. It actually is a lot more healing, and, and also I agree with the yes. news and take a good hour walk every day. It's amazing how much joy will jump to life, and I, that's got to be the hardest thing. Thank you so much Thank you, for Rich. the sacrifice you're making, and not only for doing this, but I, I just got to tell you, I'm not sure I have the heart or the perseverance to go public and to make the sacrifices you are. Thank you for fighting the good fight on my behalf and so many others, Spencer, and just what high respect that I have on you, not only as the governor, about how you've conducted your life and the kind of man you are. And I truly count you as a friend. I know you can count on me. Next election, or even if it's not election-oriented, uh, you, you have my highest confidence and trust. Thank venture. you, Rich. That means the world to me. Thank you. My privilege.